you you know you know I gotta go here. I only thought about it because of the analogy she just used about car insurance, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel if your spouse does not want life insurance? They're the breadwinner. <laughs> your spouse is the breadwinner. Oh my okay. god! They don't want life insurance. Your spouse is the breadwinner, but they don't want life. Insurance. They just think I don't like, care if they don't want life insurance. They just I mean, I don't care if they the breadwinner or not. I think every, I mean me personally, I think everybody should have um, like life insurance F for estate planning reasons and stuff like that. Like, I mean, even if you don't have kids, you still want to leave something to you know. Grandkids, your cut. Like I got, like I don't have kids, but I got my policies and all my, like I got my trust set up to where all my stuff goes to my little, uh, my nieces and nephews, right? But when I get married, then I'm gonna switch that around and have my wife there if something was to happen to me. But I feel like just because you are single doesn't mean you have to leave asset. I mean liabilities to your family. And let it go, you know, let it go away. Like, let's say you got a car payment, you got all this stuff. You need to be able to pay that stuff off, and you I'm pay it off that with death certificate. Like <laughs> so they cannot pay no more. So how I'm I look talking at about life married insurance? Circumstances. Okay. How I look at life insurance is my family needs to be able to live the same lifestyle that they live now. Correct. When I'm not here. So even though my husband will be able to afford the lifestyle that we have now without my income, that also means that if I were to die. Now you have extra money that you can put in savings. Now you have extra money that you can, you know, give to our daughter. Like, it's other things that go into it. Now, obviously, my situation might be a little bit different because I do have a family. But for me, it's about, about – Yeah. For I'm me, about to ask it's you, about – Did your mindset change around life insurance after you had your daughter and after you got married? Or so was, was it always like this? I've always had that mindset as far as, like, you know, leaving something behind for my family. When I got married, it was like, okay, you know, we both have our life insurance policies. But now it's like, all right, what are we leaving to our daughter? Like, mm -hmm. my goal when my daughter graduates from high school, if she goes to college or not go to college, it doesn't matter. But she got money set aside. If you want to buy your first house, pay for your first business. Whatever you want to do, you got that money set aside. So I'm thinking about long term for my family, not just for me. So mm -hmm. that's why life insurance is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, I'm I'm be honest, I wouldn't date a girl who wouldn't want life insurance. <laughs> Like if you, I just if don't you, want it right now because I'm like it's like you okay. My thing is, only person I can think about leaving money to is my mom, right? I, what I maybe, about a charity? What about the P no. establishing like your, your continuing business. the work that I, you do right now it, as a PA? I don't, just don't believe in being. Maybe I watch too much Lifetime movies and I just stuff. <laughs> well, that means you really need it. <laughs> no, right. no, people, 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 people literally, people literally get killed for life insurance. Pop. I don't like the idea of being worth more dead than alive. To like, and, and it's like you don't, you don't think people will be like that until. It happens. But that's why you set up a trust. And when you set up it's, a, tr you can, you can, I have you can, other, you set I up have a trust. other vehicles of mm, like what I'm saving right now with people. <laughs> like there's, there's beneficiaries on everything that I have. Mm -hmm. So they will inherit that anyway. But like right now I don't have, I, I'm not, I'm not focused on making sure my brother get 20,000 if I'm gone. Cause he can't get 20,000 from me now. So I'm, I, that's not a priority of mine. I, if now my mindset will change once I'm married and have children because I brought them in this world and they're my responsibility, dead or gone. I mean, dead or alive. Mm -hmm. But my cousin Titi, I'm not. I don't care about her I mean, having ten k. Yeah, I, I hope you don't have a cousin Titi. She gonna be listening <laughs> like for real. Yeah, no, I'm just saying, like, like I don't. <laughs> Right, she's like, well, now how I get in this? No, right. but like, I, I'm not. That's not my part. Like, in terms of say, like, in terms of where I'm putting my investments, I'm not focusing. Well, on Well, see, it's not an investment. Life it is an investment. Life, life insurance is not an investment. It's different types of life insurance. Yeah, it's but not an so investment. I'm not looking at life insurance as an investment. You don't think you don't think it's a a, a thing that you're pre like it is an investment because it's like it's. It's building, it's money that you're going to eventually, like, pass on to, like, children, right? Your kids or, like, your hair, like, mm -hmm. like, your inheritance, right? So, to me, that is, in, if it was an investment, it wouldn't be more. It's not an investment. It's, it's, it's protecting my investments. So, okay, I build up this. Just because it's protecting my investment doesn't mean it's an investment. I'm building up this million-dollar brand, right? Okay, let's say, you know, I'll take me out of it because I ain't gonna never die. So let's put somebody else. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. No, I'm joking. It's gonna be a long time. So we talked about I'm 80, 90 years. Uh, let's say John over here is building up this fifty, sixty million dollar brand, whatever he got, right? And when he transferred that to his uh, to his family, he's going to have to pay estate taxes in order to transfer those assets. So when you do that, you can pay the estate taxes with the life insurance. 
right? So that's how I'm thinking about it. Now, so it's not an investment. Okay. No, it's not an investment. It's protecting the investment because what can happen is, um, let's say I got a piece of real estate, for example, right? And this real estate um, is in a prime location, great real estate, but the market's down, Mm -hmm. right? It's 2008, and somebody passed in 2008. Now they have to pay estate taxes. Now they're forced to sell that asset at a loss or at at the bottom of the market to pay those estate taxes when they could have used the life insurance to pay the estate taxes, kept the property, and 10 years later, that family still has that house and that asset, and they wasn't forced to sell it I, to pay the in- estate tax. I have a question. Have y'all ever seen how family act when people leave stuff? But that's why, this, you, that's why you leave. How people act? That's why you have a trust. When you have a trust, you dictate what the money goes to. You're toward. dead. So you, no. So no, no, if no, no, you no, have no. a trust, uh, you literally put in there who the money goes to, when it goes to them, and everything else. You right, can say right. my cousin, so, you can say my auntie or my niece or my, my nephew don't get this money until they're 30. I, I, exactly. I've seen family members who sold everything after grandpa died. Mm-hmm. Like, That's because like he, that, he ain't have it. <laughs> he ain't have a trust. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, because granddad I, ain't have a trust, and maybe because, like I said, I study psychology. Like, I like people. Like, we we can have hopes of how people are going to act. Like, even mm-hmm. your own kids. Like, it's it's people who who celebrities. They kids acting cr- acting up with money. Muhammad, like Muhammad Ali son said something wild, and I'm like, bro, like, like. So he, he, uh, he, here's the thing, though, right? Because this comes back to just family generational wealth planning. Like, I anticipate that that Andrea and her husband were raise their daughter to understand the basic fundamentals, budgeting, saving, and investing. She's going to be well-versed on those things by the time she's an adult. So let's say she's 50 by the time she inherits her parents' assets. Mm -hmm. Her thought process is going to be, let me go act ignorant with this money because she grew up her entire life being raised by financially savvy parents, and she understands how these things work. So their family dynamic isn't going to be, I totally I'm going to do something that, petty. But that's not a guarantee, though. It's not. It's but not a guarantee, is, but you I'm can dead train. And you just educate. inherited a couple million dollars, and you want to go blow it, that's on you because I'm, right. I'm not here to it, see it. Exactly. But realistically, the way that I plan on raising my child, she understands, like, okay, you know, mommy's saving money, daddy's saving money, we're doing all of these different things, but we still can live and do everything else so when she gets old enough where she can like completely understand it it's all going to make sense to her and she'll more than likely have a similar i mean you know, you like, that's a that's a, that's put a put key m- word though more than likely like you we can always do things like this y'all like why are we acting like celebrity <laughs> kid like y'all well, see, acting, uh, like, see celebrities don't they, don't they, don't about they, money. Don't they, they don't mean they financially just literate. They have Muhammad a Ali wasn't the most savvy person but, financially but i'm just saying though like that just but it's still showing like there's no guarantee but high there's earner like, does not mean high savior high oh, earner does high not earner mean, don't mean high financial literacy yeah. either a lot of those people they have all of these different people that are over their finances and they don't even know what's they going on already. so no, here's the thing the the fa- the reason muhammad ali is muhammad ali or let's just take His Muhammad talent. Ali out of it, out of it, right? Let's just the reason these athletes are the reason they made it to the NFL is the, the reason talent. a lot of them are financially illiterate because they spent so much of their youth studying football, studying basketball, right? Studying soccer or whatever they're good at, and they got those ten thousand hours in. So when they're twenty one, they're ready to go to the league. When they're nineteen, seventeen, they're ready to go to the league. If you flip that around, if you've been studying finances or budgeting and all, uh, you know, all that when you was six with your your allowance and now you're 18, 19, you are mentally, you would be ready to handle, you know, getting $10,000 or $100,000 or whatever, right? You would be ready for that. But a lot of times we never, like, our mind is a muscle, right? So if we never, you know, strengthen the financial literacy part of our mind, then it's never going to, you know, it's, we're never going to be ready to receive any money. Just the same amount of work we put in, in as an athlete or to become a PA or become a whatever, or financial, that same energy can go towards becoming financially literate so those things won't happen. I just I seen, I've just seen a lot of people, like, get homes left to them. They either don't pay the taxes on it. And, and like, obviously I can't say how they were brought up, right? But, like, I've just seen where – Pe- grandparents and parents have done a lot of work can, can to I, can build I say that this? and like the kids don't do right. Can I it. say this? Okay. But I'm not Pe- saying I won't do the same no, thing. No, people but. lose homes because of taxes and stuff like that. Well, you can put in the trust 
the money in the trust pays the taxes <laughs> on this house, so it never True. will get I lost. think sometimes yeah. people don't know. So, like, when you say about people losing houses, stuff like that, it's like, oh, I got this house. But they never knew, like, oh, I have to pay taxes or I have to keep the That's house true. up or, you know, it's going to, you know, get condemned at different stuff. But I've definitely seen people who, like, just get big-eyed at, like, I, like, I dated a guy who was arguing with his his – Basically, his like sister side of the family, like don't sell this house, like don't mm-hmm. like th- this house just got left to y'all, like look. And then he watched a, a white old, old man buy it for like they got big because it was like offered in cash, right? Yeah. They got big eyed at that, and then like, but I don't, I don't want people to think that I don't believe in leaving stuff for my children. I'm going to, I'm just saying right now as a single woman, not married with no children. If I have extra money at the end of the month, which people our age and our race don't typically have, right? Like, we got to admit that we are unicorns in our demographic, right? Okay. So, if I have $300 to spare, I'm putting that towards something like a Roth. I'm sorry. That's that's just what so, I'm saying. 